All right, guys, we're back. Welcome to the second half here. Drop frames. Oh, your camera's still not working. <laughs> so we put it back. <laughs> you know, it's always there when you need it. It's always. There. I'm just, just waiting to see it on stream. You, <laughs> God damn it! Someone, I, else, I think, I think Bunny sent me a, uh, an image to use, but I couldn't download it fast enough. So. Uh. Oh, oh yeah, I couldn't download. Okay. I couldn't download okay, it fast. Cool. You know, it's it's all technical, Co. You got you got cords going into other cords. And who knows how it works? <laughs> it's you a series of lie. tubes, JP. Okay, I get it, Dick. You can always rely on JP to kick you when you're down. Yep, that's what <laughs> Thanks, I'm here for. buddy. That's what I'm here for. Uh, let's talk a little bit about E3 because I know Zeke and Co. You guys didn't get a chance to talk last week when we were doing the show, and uh, I'd love to get your opinion on E3 as well. Uh, what was y'all's, I guess we'll just start off, what was y'all's game of the show, or thing of the show, if you have something that's not a game? Uh, Zeke, we'll start with you. Uh, Dark Souls 3, man. Yeah? The, just, just the announcement. Did you get to see the, uh, the, uh, the little, like, thing they had set up with, a the blood squirting out of it on the floor? I didn't. I actually, I was invited to that, and I didn't, that was, that, I, I was already gone by then. Um, uh, but, uh, I saw the pictures of it. Um, and it looked fucking fantastic. It, 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 and the game, the, the that trailer that they dropped. Oh. Yeah, it looks very Dark Soulsy. Uh, I'm happy. That, I was very happy that they said that it's the last one, because it means that they're gonna go back to the drawing board and actually like work on something else for more than a year. <laughs> There's like they've just been pumped. Like it's only been what like six years since the first Dark Souls came out or some crazy shit. And they've already had this is the third one. Yeah, but they're constantly good though. They are. I mean, there's that for sure. But I, if you were a Call of Duty player, you'd probably say that all the Call of Duties are constantly good as well, right? Like that was the the relationship that I made is that they're kind of like Call of Dutifying it. I don't Call think Call of Dutify people who just play to make Call of Duty. Hate That's Call a term. People that that play Call of Duty hate Call of Duty. Yeah, they hate it. They're they're like they're, a lot of them are just they hate everything, kids. They're teenagers. They're yep. growing up but in they, the world. They play it constantly, don't they? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> They're like, fuck this, this is stupid. And yeah, but you do the same thing with Dark later. Souls. You say the same shit with Dark Souls. No, but I don't say... I, it's a rage-inducing game, but because just because it's difficult. Not because it's bad. It's a wonderful game. Like, I would say, like, Call of Duty players and people that do that are like, what the fuck is this fucking gun is dumb? What the fuck did you put this in? What the, God, this, this map is stupid. <laughs> okay, that's true. You know, but uh, that Last Guardian... Very hyped about Last Guardian. I'm a, I'm a big Team Eco fan. Um, the uh, um, Shadow of the Colossus and, and Eco were both uh, great. I, I didn't really like find myself loving Eco as much as a lot of people, but Shadow of the Colossus is fucking fantastic. So I'm I'm yeah. really excited to see what they do with that. Um, uh, Dreams I thought was the most. You were into that shit. Scared the fuck out of me. I know and that's why it induced an emotional response for me, and I was and I, I can't wait to see what people can do. Did you if see they, that if they pull it off badly. It's going to be just so horrible. But if if it works out, it's going to be fucking fantastic. Did you see that, Co? I saw you furrow your brow. Did you, so Dreams I, is I, Media I, Molecules' I new joint that they're doing with Morpheus. I think they're doing with Morpheus. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's it's like an artsy fartsy game where they they were like making. They were like dr drawing. I don't even know how to fucking describe it. They were like making a stick figure in game that had pre made animations for this stuff. And then they could, people can like make their own dreams basically. So, like, this one was oh. kind of like watercolor y a little bit. And like, it was a guy playing a piano. And that's kind of, that was what they showed. There was a little bit of other ones, but well, uh, it, it just looked like a so nightmare factory for me. Yeah, man. It's Holy so it shit. Lets the player. It lets the player make whatever they want to in the game. Yeah, pretty so, much. So, so in other words, it's an eighty percent <laughs> sex simulator, twenty percent. <laughs> there will probably be a lot of sex. Yeah, I and assume that. Yeah, but it it's reminds, it's, if you've ever seen a tool video, it yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I didn't even think wow, of that, really? dude. It looked. It reminded me exactly of a fucking tool video, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and let's see. I'll just I'll just wrap up uh, by saying like uh, the South Park. New South Park game is coming oh, out. Oh, yeah. That's awesome, Fuck, yeah. Those guys are coming with some of my heroes. Um, Who put the uh, dick in the toilet? Cuphead. <laughs> Cuphead looked fucking yeah. amazing. Like, I only saw the trailer for that. It looked Joe. great. When I saw Beautiful Joe for the first time when it came out on the GameCube, it was like, this is like, it's lively and it looks awesome. Like, Beautiful Joe is like from a comic book and this is like from a, 
like a Steamboat Willie cartoon. Yeah, it, th- the animation on that is is actually like a feat. Uh, it just looks fucking crazy. Uh, if you haven't seen that game in motion, definitely go check it out. It's called yeah. uh, what, what, uh, Cuphead. Sorry, that's the name of it. Yeah, it's only bosses too, which is it's kind of like Titan Souls in the sense that there's only bosses. There's no like levels to traverse or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But apparently that, the bosses you know, are super hard. That's a really interesting new thing to to see. I'm I don't know how I feel about that to be honest. I really enjoyed Titan Souls, and if if like I I, I felt it was lacking. Yeah, oh, I mean it was a two hour game, one hundred percent. Uh, or Free. sorry, it was a short game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> longer for other people like Zeke, who are less inclined uh, at video games. I hate you. Inclined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'm I, I would play that game just because of how it looks, not because of anything else, because it looks fucking unreal. Yeah. Uh, Co, what about you? What was kind of your your stuff of the show? In recap. Ooh. Well, um, first of all, Fallout Four. I, I gotta say I was I was blown away. You know, I, I went into the Fallout 4 saying I can't be more hyped. You know, just give me another new Vegas, I'll be happy. And then they announced the building. They oh, announced the, a lot, yeah. The the graphics are great. The world is big for an hour. <laughs> customizable custom, custom, mm, customizable weapons and customizability and of the weapons and armor. Oh my god. God. <laughs> yeah, I just got done with a 100% Witcher 3 playthrough. I've been told by sources I trust that I'm expecting 450 hours in yeah. in Fallout 4 and I've already like I it is going to be one of the my largest undertakings I've ever done on Twitch and I cannot wait to get started. That's my fault. Fa- but anyway, I I could do a whole we could do a whole episode on Fallout 4. So I'm just gonna right there. We should uh, just get a bunch of Fallout fanboys on the show and I'll just leave. Let's, and you guys can, dude. Yeah, we'll have Shannon host it. <laughs> You, Please. Shannon, and oh, yeah. <laughs> Renee, and maybe like Anne, I guess would maybe be oh, the Oh my the, god, and we can just talk. To, yeah, no, anyway. Dan, anyway, would, anyway. Dan would need to be there as well. We'll bring Dan in. Oh, absolutely. Dan, Dan is one of the, like, I, I love watching Dan play Fallout. He, it's just so clear he knows so much about the world when he plays well, that's it. What it, was, it was awesome to have him on the show when they were announcing all that stuff, because he's like, we would basically be like, Dan, what what is the significance of that? Like, why does that fucking matter? <laughs> I gotta say, man, I was I was in the chat during the Fallout thing, and there was a few times that I was like spamming all caps in chat. That, That's an NCR trooper you just showed, and you guys were like, yeah, it's an armor type of some kind. I don't, yeah. I think it's the game. <laughs> I was just like, that, that, that. but anyway, okay, moving on. Final Fantasy VII remake. Oh yeah. Oh. I I saw that trailer, and and here's the thing. I I was watching on the plane, so I caught like random stills in low res. Yeah. And even that was enough to give me chills when I realized what was happening. Like for me, it 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 was doing everything, and I the first thing I caught was the the Shinra goggles. I was like, Yeah. Oh, oh no, 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 they're not really doing this, are they? And then all of a sudden, it's it like paused for a second, and I'm like, What's next? What's next? And then the next screen that loaded was just. All it was like a faded photograph of just the the sword, and I was like, "It's Cloud Sword." Yeah, I noticed from the music I was right away. So, oh my god, I couldn't believe it. I I was a huge Final Fantasy VII was one of the first lo- like real games I ever did, um, and and I I it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they're doing with it. it makes me a little bit nervous. They're changing the story. Yeah, they said the story. Did you play? Uh, did you change. play up to uh, thirteen? Two. I played almost all of them. I, I I skipped a couple of them and I didn't finish a couple of them. Some but of like, them are pretty terrible. I, yeah, like the Every, one with the guy up, with the tail. I couldn't get into that one. Which I think one was it was that? like nine or I think it was nine or eleven. It was one, but like ten 13, was really good. Ten like was I good. keyed thirteen on the Xbox. I I loved thirteen. I played I played fi- uh, fourteen online for months. Like I I love the Final Fantasy universe and I can't wait to see what they do with seven. Oh yeah. But I the the rumor going around. I have okay. So this is kind of a spoiler, but at this point we, so small warning, little spoiler. But yeah, the game's been out for the big rumor right years. now is that Eris isn't gonna die. Yeah, uh, and and yeah, if they're that gonna let were Eris to happen, live. Like, I don't know how they was, do that. That was an iconic gaming experience. Well, it's not even that. It's like that is what the the story of the game is like. Eris has to die. That is amazing. Dude, that was point. one of the first times I ever realized a game could make me cry. Like yeah. something completely fake that I have no emotional investment in. Like I didn't even like I was I, when I watched that scene when I was younger. I was like I shed a tear before I even realized what I was doing. I was so just in that world. So I'm. I'm a little shaky on that, but uh, anyway, moving on. Uh, we'll just we'll just go down them quick. Horizon looks amazing. 
little concerned that they're trying to they're they're being a little fan servicey with big robot dinosaurs. Hold on, I'm, hold on. They're being a little fan servicey, and you just got done talking about Final Fantasy VII. It's the fucking it's wet different. dream of the Sony no, conference. On, Are you on. kidding me? Remaking a classic is not fan service, especially considering how old the classic was, and at the time they were very limited in how I they think could that's, tell their story. I so think that's, that's them the retelling the story with the tools. That's not fan servicey. Fan servicey, on the other hand, I again I want Horizon to be awesome. I want Horizon to work, and I hope they have some cool story while there's a bunch of robot dinosaurs stomping around a biological world. Like, hopefully it all makes sense. And if it does, it's going to be great, because the gameplay looked awesome. Yeah. But I'm just a little concerned. It's like, you know, unicorns with laser beams on dinosaurs. You know, like, <laughs> I, I'm a little worried. It's just kind of like a bunch of cool stuff thrown in a world. But it looks great, and it could be cool. For Honor, awesome. Yeah, it, looks, it looks like chivalry, but better but way. more it looks yeah. it looks like a more exact chivalry which a lot of people's complaint has been chivalry is really cool but it's just a little bit loose enough to where it doesn't feel quite right now for honor looks like it may conquer that for honor actually like I sat there, what? what i said i had to give giggity in there i had to put it in oh. there <laughs> It's a little loose and doesn't feel quite right. <laughs> Sometimes you've got to slap it and tighten it up a little bit, you know? There you go, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah. That, for all those, like, that. Going, going down the list, um, the other the day, the New Day Sex looks great. Dishonored 2, I was really surprised they showed as much story in the Dishonored 2 thing as they did. I yeah, was expecting just to... I guess the gameplay's going to be the exact same. They showed the antagonist. They showed, like... I. It's kind of weird. They're taking it clearly a new direction. Um, but again, I love Dishonored 1. I'm looking forward to replaying it, and I think Dishonored 2 could be great, too. Yeah. Um, I'm sure I'm missing, like, 10 games. but There I've was been a lot about. of stuff announced. Yeah. For sure. I, I feel like I've been talking. Allie, what do you think of E3? Yeah, Allie, what was, what was your E3 like? E3 was great. I love E3. This was my second E3 that I've been to. And um, I always love E3 because there's so much into production for every booth like every booth is just so extravagant yeah. when you walk by you're just mesmerized by it um i got to play overwatch which was really i don't know i can say that i can i can say yeah. i played Overwatch. yeah you went you took photos of it and tweeted out images at the blizzard office <laughs> you can talk at about the that. blizzard headquarters yeah I just had to make sure that I could say that I played it. And well, I, the I whole can. thing, the whole Blizzard office experience is so weird because you like walk in and you're greeted by a desk and they're like, all right, you got to sign this NDA before you can fucking walk in five feet. Yeah. You can't move from, the, please don't go into the fucking little award thing. Don't go in that room. <laughs> yeah. Sign the NDA. Like they're very, very security tight there. I guess that's Oh, they, they are. But yeah. They are. But it was cool to see the the Blizzard headquarters. I didn't I didn't play very like I didn't play WoW at all mm -hmm. ever. Uh, I played Hearthstone a little bit, um, but Overwatch was really cool to play. I enjoyed that. Um, another game at E3 was Mad Max. Really? I don't know if you guys. Yeah. I, I I've was, heard that that game was not that great, but I'm really? interested that you had a good experience with it. I did. I think it's. It, I'm not a big console player at all. I really prefer PC over console, but this game was uh, previewed on Xbox, mm -hmm. and it they said that it was going to be on PC, and I'm super stoked for it because it's just... Have you guys seen the movie at all? I have not seen it yet, and I um, everyone has lambasted me for not seeing it. It's a badass movie. See, and have just, you like, seen it yet? Did you see Mad Max? Fuck yeah, I did. Yeah, okay. He's, my, okay. my, my, no, my wife is in that. My future wife is in that, and she has a shaved head. <laughs> oh, does does she know she's your future wife? <laughs> does she need to? <laughs> I was just curious. No, hey, I, haven't no seen I, will, I will meet her one day, and she will go, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> like, fake. I know? see. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, of course I, I saw it. It'll happen. It was fucking fantastic. It'll happen. Yeah. The game so looks Mad good. Max was really cool. Yeah, it was yeah. really cool. Uh, I didn't get to play it. I watched uh, Brennan play it because mm -hmm. it was so exclusive that there was only certain like time slots that we could have made. So I was like, well, I'll just let you play like 20 minutes and I'll just like watch. And watching him play, there's just so much you can do in that game with customization and just the gory and the missions. It's really cool. I don't know if I can talk too much about about it because it was so exclusive it's but. always weird like what you can and can't talk about what you see at e3 because everyone has different mm -hmm. rules right so oh yeah that's why i'm like you never know Fretting with it 
Yeah, you never know. You never know. What else? Uh, like, what was your favorite booth? You said you, you enjoyed all the booths. What was your favorite one? Because I, we, I didn't get to see any of the floor, and I don't know if Ko or Zeke did. Uh, it's going to well. be really funny because there, I was walking past. It was next to the YouTube gaming booth, and I walked past, and this guy, this indie booth, he hands a plastic knife to me, and he's like, do you want to stab someone? And I was like, <gasps> okay, yeah. So he put you it like. You should have just stabbed him. Just not. <laughs> just right there. Ha ha! Stab it. Just yeah, right away. I would have been like, maybe not the best choice of words. Yeah. I would have loved yeah, if you grabbed the I'm knife. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> pretended you had like a nom flashback or something. Like, ah! And start stabbing people. <laughs> it just makes me think of like Monty Python for some reason where they just start going in at people at the start. Yeah. Store. Well, then he handed me the knife, and then there was like three other people in this like tiny booth. And he was like, all right, we're going to blindfold you. You guys are teams of two. You got to stab each other. And that was cool. Like, the interaction was really cool. Wait, and cool this was a game? Or was this just a guy that was, like, there making it, They were representing an indie game. Um, oh. Rose Macbeth, I think it was called. I'd have to double check. But Never it was, like, it. this indie game booth. They, like, would switch over and, like, do different games. And at that point, it was Rose Macbeth. Um, always the Twitch booth is, like, really nice at any convention it's kind of a sanctuary place where you can go and sit down and like drink and like meet up with your other twitch streamers right i always enjoy that Did they that usually a... have something going on like on the stage so you can sit and there and watch can... yeah you can watch things going down do they have um, a pretty big presence on the floor like compared to the other booth sizes was it pretty large it was it was large. It was a large size. Um, was it the same stuff? Was the same thing that they use at PAX, like through and through the same yeah. stage? Okay, same yeah. size and everything. Yeah. Cool. So, cool. I'm trying to think of any other booths. That... Did you get to check out any of the Morpheus or any of the VR stuff? Mm mm. Oh, there was man. a lot of just like walking around and vlogging, and like before you knew it, the time was just yeah, gone. Yeah, the day was gone. It shows yeah. only open for before, so many. Before times. we move on from this. Just to, I'd love to know y'all's opinions on the Microsoft goggles. And the, yeah, the HoloLens? Lens. Yeah, did you see that? Yeah, because I, I saw... went to the Xbox conference. Oh, oh, okay, at the conference. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw that, and literally my stomach dropped. I didn't. I don't even play Minecraft or anything like that. But I was just like, oh my gosh, this yeah. is freaking nuts. I, I need a... to learn how to play Minecraft. Or I read I don't a know lot of uh, stuff of of people doing so. The behind closed doors demo that they did for that was for Halo, uh, and so it starts out and they they actually measured uh, your eyes so they could line it up on the Hololens, uh, like where your eyes are actually on your head, just so they can match with the Hololens. You put it on, you walk in there, and they they um, they're like staring at a wall and there's nothing going on. They're like, all right, uh, I want you to turn around and walk towards what you see, and like people said, they turn around and they would see like a waypoint system from Halo, and it would be like right there in front of them, like it was real. And so they walked yeah. to the waypoint um, and then like on the wall, there was this console that was like a window and it was out. It was like the window was real in the sense that it didn't change as you got closer. Like it, you actually were controlling the perspective of it. If that makes sense, like you could get down and like look through the window. And if you, if you got like lower to the ground, you could like look up and see what was up where you couldn't see before. And a lot of That's people that were insane. trying it were saying it was like the craziest fucking thing they've ever tried because they. I feel like it, I'd get motion sickness though from that. Well, that I don't that's know That's the thing why. is that it's not like a it's not like a VR headset like it's it's augmented reality right so it's like it's as if you're in your room right now, and a a con a, a, a window opens up to space like right next to you on your wall. <clears throat> it's a very fucking weird thing to think about, and that's why I was asking if you had seen it because everyone that's seen it was just said it was mind blowing. Oh, I bet. I didn't get to see it like firsthand, but yeah. I would love to. I think that's going to be I don't think that's going to be able to be streamed at all. I don't know how you well, do any of that. Okay. <laughs> here here okay, there's there's two things I want to buy this. First of all, when those glasses go mainstream, that is the next evolution in gaming. I'll 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 say it right now. Like when I when I saw that Minecraft thing, yeah. There is no question that when that gets to a point where it's easy for people to get that's where gaming is going. Can you imagine, like, if if you're you're giving a stream like a weather person in front of a green screen, except you're playing a real time strategy game and you're real time selecting units and moving them yeah. around a map? I mean, or if you're in a plane and you see the person 
Like, imagine if you had a bunch of just generic levers around your desk, like like a space station, right? Just a generic lever. But through your eyes, you see the full cockpit of a spaceship, and yeah. every lever is tactile and works. Um, I mean, the the horror games. It was well, that. That was the other thing too. Excellent. Dan was saying that there was a demo of it that I didn't hear about, where you would go into a room and they would tell you like, "Okay, this is gonna be like a horror thing." I hope, and they would like make you sign a waiver and shit. And you go into the room and they go out and close the door, and it was just a normal room with like a couch and everything. And then like creatures would like appear from like behind a couch and like slowly pop up behind it, and then they would like disappear. It was like playing Amnesia, but the level was your room. And like the yep. scary shit was actually in your room. I, I wouldn't Ooh. do that in my own house because then I no. wouldn't want to live there. It's interesting though, because there's there's two ways to approach this. There's create there's fabricating real environments to be the game. And I think we're still kind of far off from that. Yeah. I don't think we're quite to the point where we're gonna be walking around like laser type or like you showed I I think we talked about that video, JP. I think you found it. Of like the almost laser tag style arena. Yeah, I forgot. And guys were the, walking through it. There was a big drag. Yeah, that, that's probably v. a little bit ways off. That's a little bit more like laser tag gimmicky kind of thing. You have to go somewhere. You have to, but the, the stuff I'm really looking at is conforming your current environment, your current desk, your wall. You know, like the fact that we can transform any one of these surfaces into anything someone can imagine that it's interactable. Yeah. Just imagine the porn, JP. No, I know that the, uh, the porn industry will definitely Seriously, take a hold of that the adult, first. The adult industry is going to take this, and they're going to take it to a whole new level. And just like I think Zeke, if I'm not mistaken, you're the one that, that made this very good point at some point. Anything the adult entertainment industry can pick up on is going places. Yep. Like it's go it's going to have billions of dollars poured into it. It's going to have oh, billions yeah. of hours of development. Like it, it's it's a funny thing to think about, but anywhere that industry goes, other industries tend to follow. And when you have something like VR where you can actually put a functional headset on and, you know, things look real. Yeah, um, uh, yeah that's uh, that's uh, going to open a lot of doors <laughs> for a lot of people that are interested in that stuff. And a lot more opportunities for, you know, gaming that we appreciate and can stream um, will be available. Yeah. It's cool what, stuff. There were some complaints about the, the HoloLens that it's a very, like, small 16 by 9 window that's, like, centered right here in your head. Or right here in the, in the view set. So if you would, like look on the side of that you wouldn't see whatever it was that they were trying to so show wait, you it's not the whole it's not lens. the whole thing it's a very small box that is kind of like the so center if you were of to your turn view. your head for like a little bit to the side then you'd see like half vr yeah half if you were to hold the headset and like turn or like ah, move your head see, outside that, yeah, yeah it, but that's that's a limitation it's the first thing of its kind like it's still fucking insane um, but yeah what that's the big thing when i saw that minecraft thing that was the first time ever that I'd seen 3D VR that I didn't feel was gimmicky. Well, it's AR. Like, it's not. It's not VR. Just well, it's wait, AR. wait. What is AR? What augmented is that? reality. Augmented. Yeah. Okay. But but even then, like the Minecraft demo in particular, you could really have fun with that. This oh, isn't. Yeah. This isn't oh, something yeah. like you know a, a fancy tech demo. Yeah. You could thoroughly enjoy that. Like even if you were a streamer and you were just on a Minecraft server for your subs, you weren't even playing. You were just like looking and manipulating and editing and running something. You know that that opens yeah. huge possibilities. You know, it's a, what it's a true I'm, minority what really, report situation. Like, when you're talking about like cockpit and levers and stuff like that, I was thinking uh, uh, like, I would love a game. I don't know. I don't know what kind of game it would be, but like a game that would lay out on a on a AR headset like uh, like the Minority Report computer or whatever. Yeah. So you'd be, you'd be like, well, can you imagine playing like Warhammer? <laughs> online or not uh, not online but like warhammer 40k with like the models like oh, if God. your models actually like fought you could play virtually with someone across the world yeah. on, a, on a virtual board so you could actually like you know because the big thing about warhammer that you have to lug all those little things around and you have to set up an area and no one can touch it for like six hours you yeah. could do that with your friends in norway and sweden just on a flat table at your house that's crazy. all you need why why they got to be norwegian man yeah, why do they have to be an origin, man? Are they, hey, they could be from Finland, just saying. <laughs> Maybe some Germans. Maybe See, there some you go. Okay. Okay. okay, you know some I just people. people. I like my Europe folks. What can I say? Come on. <laughs> Apparently, Co's respect. from Boston Jesus. now. I don't know what's going on. Uh, whatever. We'll deal with it. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, it'd be crazy. It, some of the other Morpheus demos, there was one with the knife. That, or, sorry, the kitchen is what it was called. And um, you start out and your hand is like your in the in the in game i guess is how you would say that your hand is bound and a guy's got like a knife 
they're basically it's a it's an interrogation and it, a lot of people said that that was like the one that got like a giant emotional response from them because they're like in your face interrogating you and since you're like in the virtual reality it was super real and a lot of people were super hesitant That's to have interesting. that I don't know if I would like that. The, the best demo experience that I heard about was uh, Dan Reichert from Giant Bomb was talking about. He got in with uh, Palmer Lucky, who is the, I think he's the CEO of Oculus. And they gave him like the full rundown that I hadn't heard anywhere about. And they were doing crazy shit where like, he's like, all right, I'm going to take us to space. And then they would like go out to space and like the earth was tiny and they were kind of like floating around in space. He's like, all right, let's play ping pong. And they started like playing ping pong in space in VR. Uh and then he's like, all right, uh. I'm going to shrink you. And he, like, pulled out a gun in-game. And they were using the little uh, Oculus, uh, which are they're like little controllers. There's two of them. And he would, like, put up his hand, and he would shoot Dan Reichert in-game with, like, a shrink ray. And Dan's character would shrink in-game. And so all of his vision would obviously make everything look much bigger. And he said it was, like, the craziest experience because it was like it was actually happening. Like, it was yeah. fucking real. Um, and oh, then he would so like crazy. shoot the other guy and make him bigger and they changed the voice. So it would actually sound like you were bigger or smaller than the other person. And it would be like a booming voice or a really tiny mouse voice. Uh, that, that stuff just sounds wild. And I can't believe Look we're, at we're me, I'm huge. exactly. It was like that. I'm, I'm a giant. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and the fact that we're going to have that in like spring 2016, like a year or 12 months from now. Fucking that. That's crazy. No, that's fucking crazy. Was it just a fever dream that I saw a VR with like actual props and stuff? What do you mean by props? Like you were moving through like an area. Like if you that was like, JP. Last drop frames. We were both on Zeke. Remember JP linked that video? Yeah. Oh, that's what yeah. That was. Yeah. That's what. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that was an E3 thing. Okay. No, that was an E3. Okay. That was uh. That's. I think that might actually be in like Seattle or something. Uh, oh, that was like that was like two weeks ago. It was like you know, like, eons. Yeah. yeah. Was wild I gotta say this though, and I'm and I'm pleading that someone from their team is listening or at least is thinking about this. We need a webcam using software that can display whatever is being seen through the glasses. If they don't do something like that, you're never gonna see this on Twitch. And I would yeah. love Oh, you mean like a camera input, yeah. On Twitch. Just a webcam and where the software just intelligently overlays, you you sync it to a headset. And whatever that headset sees. Oh, you're talking about for the augmented. Some type of capture. For the I want to be able to take a, a regular webcam and via software have my viewers see whatever I'm seeing. And if they can't yeah. do that, then I'm going to look like a fool poking at a blank wall. And I don't want to well, that, do that. That's what that <laughs> camera that they used on People the Microsoft. People will still watch it. They probably will. <laughs> if the camera that they used at, uh, uh, Dude, on the Microsoft thing. Right out of a science horror film. It was it like, like a, it was levers a, and shit and dials and like it was a weird, red like camera three different lenses yeah it was a red know. camera which i think run like i want to say those like retail like 30 grand uh they're super fucking expensive and then i had like some crazy who knows filter on it i don't know what fucking type of filter it was it had but. i remember it had all sorts of attachments over the lens like there were multiple yeah i'm yeah. trying to see that's how much what got red me worried because i looked at that and i was like do are we gonna need something like that just to stream this like that's which uh, immediately oh, unfortunately me, kind of takes it out because you know Oh no, they are that much. A red camera is fourteen. Uh, one of the versions is fourteen grand, and that's without the lens. That's literally just the camera with no lens or anything. So, that's what they're using on stage. So <laughs> start saving, Co. Because you might right? have to get that. You might have no, to get I remember. I remember on, being on a commercial shoot, and they rented one, and they would not let anyone fucking near it. Well, yeah, like, you cannot touch this. The only yeah. camera I touch this. Period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those things are not cheap. They, when I was in uh, college, we used to be able to rent them as well. Uh, and the, you had to sign like a billion papers to be able just to take it out like five feet from the fucking office. So mm -hmm. super pricey. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was anything. Uh, did you have a game or anything like that that you were super into, Allie? That they announced? That maybe you're looking. Are you big into this Gears? I know Brennan's super. He was. Brennan's super into Gears. Exploded over all that information. Oh yeah. I saw him streaming some of that. That was that was pretty cool. Oh, he was so excited to get home and stream it. He's like, I the first thing I'm gonna do is just stream that all <laughs> as much as I can. So I was I never got into gears though. Yeah. So I, I What did didn't you think can. of No Man's Sky? Oh, I saw that it, when it came out or when it was announced at E three last year. Yeah. And I was super hyped for that. I I'm very excited for that. Because it 
again, reminds me kind of the Daisy type of open world, but space and gigantic like, world. Yeah. Yeah. It's you still can, like it's, claim your own planets and stuff like that. That's it's it. still the game that's like, I do not believe that game functions the way they say it functions unless until right. I'm playing it. The, exactly. how, with how big that game is and like the shit that they've said, I'm just. I will. I will not believe that is the real thing until I play it in person. So you get it in your hands, and you're actually like experiencing it. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that that team is like what, like, is it five? It might be like single. It's it's no more than twenty. There's. It's a very fucking small team. Right, Nick, that yeah. has me the most worried of all. I if if they actually deliver, dude. Oh, it's gonna be like Starbound in three D to like extreme. Oh man. Yeah. It'd be it'll be crazy for sure, and then they're probably gonna. You got to think that that since Sony is I I think help funding that, or at least they're involved in that in some way. You got to think that the Morpheus, the the virtual reality shit, like that's the perfect game for it to fucking oh, yeah. like live now, in those worlds. I was here's another one, okay. and Zeke, what it maybe you saw this from Zeke because when I saw this, I immediately thought like I bet Zeke would like to play this with his guys. What did you think of Sea of Thieves? Oh, the oh yeah, yeah, it looks cool. There, there, of course. Yeah. Of course. And of course, I, I'm i going to get my fucking pirate hat. I'm going to get my iPad. <laughs> I'm going to be all over that. And, I, you know, I will not let, I will not play with anybody who doesn't say, ar or yar. Yeah. Arr, raise the mizzen mass. You know, I'm fucked, man. That would be a good, like, role playing game, right? Oh, I'm down. Oh, yeah. That'd in, be super in. fun. That'd be super fun. In. Plus, it'd be great uh, to just be our, the captain. No, we were talking about No Man's Sky. Yeah. Every time I see a game that I like, people are hyped about. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then, No Man's Sky has this fucking color scheme that just turns me off. You know, like, it's very bloomy. It's, it, it seems it's like, like kind of pastel, like, poppy. Art. Yeah, you're not a fan of that. The the color scheme. No. You know what, Zeke? I got to agree with you. I think I think it immediately makes a game look more fake. Yeah. Kind of more more cartoony and poppy. I it doesn't it doesn't ruin the experience for me, but I totally see where you're coming from. Yeah. The same thing actually, you know what? I get that feeling with Team Fortress 2. Yeah, mm. I, I don't like TF2 because of the art, for sure. I that's the same reason. Really? I love the concept of TF2. I played the hell out of Team Fortress Original. Cannot get into TF2, no matter how hard I try. It's kind of unfortunate. Weirdly enough, I could get into Dirty Bomb, which I don't know if you guys have been playing it's that. Very I've similar. been playing a little bit off stream. But TF2 I couldn't do it. Now, speaking of which, Ali, do you play any of the first-person games besides Counter-Strike? Like the Team Fortresses or any of those things? Um, I mean, GTA goes into first-person sometimes. Sure. And yeah. Daisy, <laughs> stuff like that. It's got some shooting in it, yeah. <laughs> Not a big uh, TF2 player, though? No, I played Battlefield 4, and then GTA came out, and I kind of got into that, and then Daisy, but... yeah. So in the in the Battlefield Four thing, are you hyped for Battlefront? Kind of. I didn't, oh, I really? didn't get too. Really? I didn't get too hyped about it. This I don't know. Man, I don't that, know. It was there was a lot of games that people were losing their minds of. They, they, I gotta say the fu the fucking Fallout fanatics just are absolute. I've never seen people go fucking ape shit like I have the fall. <laughs> like I was reading a Reddit thread. It was I think he was and it makes sense, right? He's like the owner of of R slash Fallout, but he's like. I'm crying as I type this, guys. Fallout 4 looks amazing. And I'm just like, are you fucking serious, man? Like, I'm, I, I'm so happy for people that they are able to get that, like, passionate about a game. Because I can't I actually feel anything anymore. But, in like, my fuck, man. So all the Fallout fans came together, and we actually huddled in a circle and cried. It wasn't, it it wasn't was, just one of us. Did you, hey, oh, yeah, we had did effigies, you? burned them the whole nine yards. Did your circle? Did you did you enjoy some like like some light ohm oming? Oh, abs absolutely. No, except they were more <laughs> chanting different, the different vault numbers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so like one oh one. Exactly. All, we all somber, that all is correct. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude! Just saying. For some of us, like that's that's our world, man. We no, I get it, man. I I get it. I I again, like I wish I. I don't know of, of a game that I am that passionate about. I'm trying to no, think of something no, that I would this, be super This is into. how I picture JP. He's like he's looking at like like uh, 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 like internal like internal computer setups. Like oh, I got two nine eighty three nine eighty TIs SLIs. Oh god, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. I do get pretty excited for that for sure. 
uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, but yeah, that was that was E three. It was it was a fun year. You guys got to. Is everyone going to the show again next year? Or you guys got to do a different route. And I, I guess this is more directed at Co and Zeke. Zeke, go ahead. What do you if think? I get, if, I, if I get the opportunity to go, I'll go. Absolutely. Yeah. I am going to do something different next year. I'm thinking. The, the big thing is the people that are at E3 from a streaming perspective, that is one of the most important two days in, in, a, in a professional streamer's career. I'll be perfectly blunt. The yeah. amount of meetings that I missed and had scheduled and stuff is, was like heartbreaking to me. Like the, the, just the amount. That's one of the only collections of real industry people. Um, the PAXs and stuff are great, but that's more for the consumer. And, it is, it, you yeah. know, that's what's great. But what I'm going to do next year is, first of all, be on Drop Frames. Because, holy shit, that was awesome. <laughs> like, being there for every single one of them. That was that. There's no question I think that's how it should be done. Because well, you, get, you get to stream it. You get to see everything as it happens. You get to comment on it as it happens. So everything's fresh in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. And most mm -hmm. importantly, a lot of... I got so many messages from people saying, why weren't you on drop frames? Really wanted to hear what you knew. Why weren't you on drop frames? Where were you on drop frames? And I was sitting here going, yeah, I was in a plane getting bad Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, that's the it, thing, it, too, like, is, is Twitch. Yeah, but second. The, well, before, before we move big. on, Twitch opened up like a crazy thing to allow people, broadcasters, to, to restream those conferences. Dude, that's been the golden don't. ticket. Yeah. Like the that fact that they did so that was awesome. just insane. And, and it also <laughs> feeds back into their numbers, right? Because they, they had insane yes. numbers. So. Here's the biggest thing about that. Twitch took a hit doing that. Like Twitch, there's no question that if Twitch would have kept that to itself, that it would have had 30, 50, 70, 100,000 people watching the Twitch channel. A more, more all yeah. That. yeah. They took a hit saying, you know what, guys? You have fun with us too. And, and a lot of people did. And in some cases, many more people were watching but other channels than Twitch. I don't know and I was they, just sitting there going, this is awesome of you. Like that was... I don't know if them taking a viewership hit is like... Because there's, you're still on Twitch. It's not like they actually care about the ad revenue money that they're making on that stream, right? It's but the it's fact that brand, you're on Twitch. It's brand recognition, though. I mean, if you if you get it, you're out still there, on Twitch.tv slash. That's true. Uh, well, you're right. There's arguments both ways. If, yeah, as long as sure. maybe maybe it was better for them to do it for the numbers. I don't I don't know. That's true. That's true. But the big thing that I'm going to be doing next year, and I'm I'm actually very seriously considering this. I've had multiple volunteers come up. We may send a guy to E3 with a GoPro with the live streaming software. Ooh. And I am going to comment on my stream as we take votes on which places he goes to. And I have actually already cool. floated this out to a few people and I may actually do interviews remotely so they would be on a phone while we watch them through this guy that we sent to E3 while we stream it back at the place. That'd be cool. It, so that the plan would be a virtual E3. So people that couldn't go could actually see all of the show floor, talk to producers, bring them into maybe some private showings so they could actually see some of the so stuff. Like a, a Survivor Man E3 kind of a thing. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it would be very like involved with the community, bring them in, you know, and, and kind of get everything involved. But, you know, I don't, I don't even know if that's legal, to be honest. E3 may have something about yeah, not I don't know where. Go. I don't know. So we've got a lot of work between now and then. To be but honest. It's, you know. It's an idea. The best thing would I th I think like the next evolution of of E3 next year for a show like Drop Frames would be to do what Twitch did and rent out a studio because they weren't even near e they were they were like an hour away from E3, right? They were up at yeah. the ESL studio. Yep. Um in in Burbank. So that would probably be like the best thing to do because then people could still come to you to, if they want to show you stuff, you could have developers there and you could just cover the entire thing away from all the fuckery that is e3 right you don't even have to like get <laughs> into the brilliant. actual thing um, absolutely and then just do do a couple of specials where you just like run around the show floor or at least say hi to people interviews yeah, dude that's yeah. a, that's a great idea I, those I studios are i i know what those costs are in out though and it would that would be a thing so you know what we'll take care of it baby let's, <laughs> let's we'll talk next year we'll see yeah we'll have to like put up a Zeke, fucking kickstarter together, or we'll something like that would be crazy that'd be crazy uh but ali you'll you'll probably return next year for you it's a no-brainer um I don't know, because with the whole Twitch being able to, like, rebroadcast it and, like, you guys said, talking yeah. about it while it's still fresh in your mind, we, Brendan and I were talking about it, how we miss so many opportunities to, like, stream it with our communities and, like, be live about it with them. But then I also brought up the fact that, like, there's a lot of friendship time to be had. And I was like, as streamers that never really leave their house, yeah, it's kind of important mm. these type of events to be social with a bunch of people, and I I enjoy being there in person and experiencing it. But I also am 
considering staying home and getting that coverage from the comfort of my own home and being able to see it that way. Absolutely. So it's, it's up in the air. Yeah. We might. No, they, I they, love going to E3. There were definitely, especially the Twitch party night where like all of the broadcasters just like, look at my photo here at the Twitch. I'm like, go fuck yourself. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, pegboard nerds. I know they, they were there. Play. I know they were there. I know. I fucking saw. I, okay. God. Just saying it. I saw one picture of that de of that setup at that club, and I was just like, "Oh!" Oh, at the Twitch party. Did you God, see that... Notch's thing in the middle of the stadium? Did you see that, Co? They had like a globe, like a uh, I don't even know how the fuck you describe it. In the middle of like a giant stadium, they had this weird like white globe, and, it, and then you could like throw lights off of the globe. So it was almost like a giant rave. And that was Notch's party 83. And he had a bunch of like DJs and shit there. Oh, yeah. You should try to find. I, I think that was either YouTube Gaming's uh, party or that was Notch's party. I don't know which, but it was fucking pretty crazy. Looking. Interesting segue into the next topic. Yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> talk a little about YouTube Gaming. Uh, they announced that like the week prior to E3. Uh, and obviously because they did so much With at E3. Some Big names behind it. Yeah, they like, had a bunch of Rooster Teeth people there. Jeff Keeley was there. Uh, Fwiz is obviously like the head of, of YouTube gaming, so he was there. Um, and I saw a bunch of... It was funny to see like a lot of people that I identify as Twitch streamers who are also YouTubers, right? Kind of like writing that line on where their allegiance was at E3, right? Because they were both at the Twitch party, but also at the YouTube gaming party, which was at the yeah. same exact time on Tuesday, which I thought was hilarious as well. Yeah. Um, it was uh, it was very interesting to see parallels transition into competitors, yeah. and the people that were kind of in between. You can see it right now if you go look at Twitter. Like, there's a lot of very big streamers, people that stream almost every day on Twitch, and don't stream on YouTube Gaming. That YouTube Gaming is tweeting out their YouTube channels. Yeah. So it's like this really weird. Like, uh, you're not really promoting it's like a, what it's they're gonna doing. It's going to be a weird they're thing, doing right? Here. It's going to be weird moving forward because there is such a, a crossover between that, right? Like, YouTubers streamed on Twitch. They didn't stream on YouTube because it didn't exist. Yeah. Or, or it did, but it just, the community wasn't there. Whatever reason, they didn't stream on YouTube. Uh, and now, they might. Like you're, I, I honestly think you'll start seeing contracts, like paid contracts to stream on a site. Um, well, how about this? Before we get too far into it, how about we go around real quick and just say our initial thoughts on it? Like, what we think about the situation. Okay, I'll go first. Yeah, go, go first. <laughs> uh, I started thinking, yeah. No, uh, I was having a conversation with uh, my mods about it and stuff like that. Um, here's what I think. Uh, Google owns, owns YouTube, and they, you know, they've had some, uh, obviously they're huge, um, and they've had some boners like Google Plus and stuff like that. Um, but I think that it will... Move, it'll push Twitch because I'm 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 Twitch heart and soul, um, because it feels I don't know I don't know if it's if if this is true or not because I don't know the other side of it. But Twitch feels like uh, a community, and YouTube feels like single people against each other. One hundred percent, but true. Um, but uh, what I would say is it will push Twitch to be better at what they need the like to to improve shit like the VOD system. They'll It'll push them to improve the VOD Ho I mean, hopefully, because competition is like the the catalyst of progress. Exactly. Yeah. And I and I hope that will do like it, it'll push Twitch to to become to do better things to like uh, uh, sort out some of the some of the shit that has been has needed fixing. And I know it's be the reason why it hasn't a lot of the shit hasn't been fixed is because it is a huge undertaking to fix the things that need fixing. Um, but um, I think that that it'll be good for uh, for for Twitch. Allie, what do you think? I agree. I think that with this um, new YouTube gaming, it's gonna push Twitch to like make bigger and better things. I feel like Twitch has come like so far, and they're already way ahead of any platform that's gaming live stream. But YouTube is a huge name. And I think that that's going to push Twitch to come up with ideas that are going to give it edge over. Even though I, I'm a uh, I'm a Twitch fangirl, like I'll always stay with Twitch no matter what. Like 
I upload my stream highlights onto YouTube on a YouTube channel, but I wouldn't go and live stream. I feel like Twitch has gotten it down with the interaction with chat and just the hosting features and all this. Like they keep coming out with just stuff that's useful. Yeah, that we don't even think about, bring, right? Exactly. That, like you said, brings a community together, not just certain streamers that are streaming. It brings a community together because, like, when I'm done streaming, I get to go host somebody that I want to support, you know? So, it's competition is always good. I think that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I think that's the cohesive thread in everyone's thoughts that I've heard, at least. Co, what, what are your thoughts on it? Then I'll give mine. You know, it since I since I started hearing Zeke and Ali, it's kind of interesting because I thought that that uh, the way I felt about it was somewhat unique. Um, but now that I've heard you two, I, I I'm actually in full agreement. the The way that I think about it, I was really excited to hear YouTube gaming, and when I said that at first, a lot of my community community was very confused because they said, "Well, look, what do you mean? Why why are you happy? Google, you know, the Google tried to buy Twitch, and then they couldn't, and now they're doing their own thing, and they're going to strong arm Twitch out of the picture." And, you know, I said, well, you know, let's let's think of some things here. First of all, every feature YouTube gaming adds is Twitch not only getting a new idea, but realizing that it needs to catch up. That's great. We all know Twitch makes a lot of money. That's awesome. They've got great resources. More importantly, us, especially here, know they've got great people working there. They are going to do their damnedest to keep up. You know, when they say... When they see YouTube come up with some awesome new mes messaging system that everyone loves, they're going to take one look at theirs and goes, okay... Let's do this. We got to rewrite this. We got to catch up. Same thing for uh, subscription options because, you know, I'm sure YouTube gaming is, has all sorts of fun stuff on how they're going to get money. Google's great at getting money. Yeah. So once they start <laughs> getting that in control, you know, people like me that have been screaming for, you know, give us the ability to do more with our subscribers. Let us have different amounts that you can subscribe per month and let us give benefits to those subscriptions and special icons and chat and emotes at different subscription amounts and all sorts of stuff. You know, like all these ideas we've been wanting to do for years, all of a sudden, if they start doing it, Twitch is going to go, you know what? Maybe it's time for us to really start doing this. Um, just like early America, competition in some cases can literally be the catalyst to send good things into the next like stratosphere of quality. It can make it so... One person that was kind of just coasting along, having fun, all of a sudden needs to shoot up and ramp up. And all that innovation we saw when Twitch first came, all those great minds that got together and made Twitch what it is today are going to have to start putting it into overdrive to take it to the next level to beat with YouTube gaming. Another very interesting thing is YouTube gaming is the first real competition, yeah. which means if YouTube gaming starts going public and saying, Hey guys, just want to let you know, you know, we're offering full term contracts where we pay broadcasters X per year and you get less portion per sub, but you get full health insurance and you get years of support so you can do whatever you want with your show and you never have to worry about subs or viewers. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are going to go, whoa. And a little bit. Of that, yeah. The next person is going to say that. Twitch is going to go, whoa. You're, You're definitely going to start seeing contracts. And you already have, like MLG already has contracts with a lot of its streamers. And there's a reason why Nate shot streams on MLG and not Twitch. It's because he got paid to yes. do it, right? So Now, I need to be clear here, though. I want to be perfectly clear. I'm, I'm a Twitch guy. I grew up on Twitch. I'm part of Twitch. And even, basically, it's the kind of thing where if YouTube Gaming came to me and said, hey, we want you to stream on us. And here's a great contract and stuff like that. I'd go, okay, how much can I legally tell Twitch? Because that's my next stop. I want them to know what yeah, you're off counter, yeah. so I can figure out what I'm going to do with the people I want to stick with. You yeah. know, because these are the guys that are doing it. And also, I hate to say it, I'm not a fan of Google and how much they plug themselves into advertising. Well, not my thing. So, but of course, it's some people's and that's fine. But, you know, like I'm the big thing that I'm so excited about is seeing how YouTube gaming is going to make my home better. That's what I'm excited yeah. about. Yeah. And I'm I'm really hoping that that Twitch doesn't look at YouTube gaming more of like I'm I'm really kind of concerned that Twitch is like, you know, screw you YouTube gaming trying to come in our turf. I hope they see it. I don't think more. they're like that at all. I hope not. I from, hope not. From I the people I've talked to at Twitch. That way. And uh, that they're tweet. not like that at all. Oh, that tweet. That, that tweet, tweet that tweet was just friendly Alpine. competition, right? It was fun, don't get me wrong, but it was That that was a way for Twitch to be like, "Hey, we're still here." Like, look like YouTube Gaming's announcing, "Look at Twitch." Like that's that's Dude, no, that I mean, was. yeah. No one can deny how that like it wasn't like antagonistic or anything. It was just yeah. it was perfect. I thought it was a perfect tweet. It was, yeah. It was great. Couldn't agree more. I thought I thought it it, it 
conveyed everything Twitch was at that time. Like, you know, like that's, that's, that, that was, it was pretty much perfect. But yeah, I'm, I'm extremely excited to see where Twitch goes from here. I think it's a catalytic process that will take Twitch to the level that, to put it bluntly, doesn't get there. Like people, you just never get to that level unless you have the competition. competition. Exactly, you need yeah. mm-hmm. something to kick you there. You, sometimes you just need to get your ass kicked. Um, you know, when you're making a ton of money, more than you even know what to do with, when you're just doing your thing, you're clearly doing your thing well. Yeah. Why why yeah. risk it? You know what I mean? But now that the new players entered the arena, this Look. this is when I this is one of the most exciting times for me, in my opinion, to be a Twitch streamer. Oh Especially yeah. Especially when it does it as a living. Well, to be a streamer, right? Very exciting things around the corner. I think you could exclude Twitch from that. It's just an exciting time to be a streamer for anyone. Because like you're only gonna see good things come from this. There this is not like, oh fuck, Twitch is dead, or oh fuck, MLG is dead, or oh fuck, Azubu's dead. Like it's like Oh shit! YouTube's actually throwing down, and now we're, everyone's gonna get an improvement here. It's yep. go time, boys. We've been waiting for this. Let's do yeah. this. <laughs> there are a lot of show them we can, let's show them why Twitch is better, basically. And I think that's probably is- the atmosphere at the Twitch offices is that is it's going to drive everyone to only work harder because now they actually have like to shit on everyone. Else. They actually have a real competitor. Like now, someone can match them in size. And a perfect example. Right when Battlefront was being premiered on the EA conference, Twitch went down. The entire opening or the entire like first time seeing this cutscene or the the gameplay during E3 at the EA conference, Twitch goes down. Uh, I was there, and I will say that it had nothing to do with Twitch. Still though, Twitch went down. YouTube that, gaming did not. But listen, but, but no, listen. I, I know you're trying to save face here for Twitch, but no, it doesn't matter. Like, I'm not trying to yeah, save face. Wait, 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 Twitch I'm went down. To say facts. Um, Just out of curiosity, can you be any more specific? No, I'm, I'm very curious. No, yeah, no. The, the company that they that Twitch hired to like the studio, like that we that they rented and that kind of shit. Uh, there, it, it was on them. Twitch Their still went down. down. Yeah, so it was I know. A third party basically. <laughs> yeah, it was a third party thing. Yeah. Yeah. Does that mean yeah. it doesn't have an office in LA? Yeah. I mean that that very may well be true, but spend more money and get a better pipe. Like that's Twitch went down and YouTube gaming didn't. That's what people are gonna see. That's what I see there. Like I started watching YouTube gaming during the middle of drop frames because I couldn't watch Twitch. They lost about two hundred thousand people on their stream and they all went over to YouTube gaming during that. Like it was a major thing that that happened. Right, but I mean, you you can't throw blame in it. It's like it's like so, light so, striking. No, I'm not. I'm not throwing blame. The, I'm the just saying. The next question like, is, how much did YouTube Gaming pay said provider? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Working. I didn't even think about that. You okay? It's the Illuminati, man. You got to think of where that's mo- where that money's going. Follow the money, man. You got to exactly. follow the money. There's a lot of <laughs> exactly. Those, like Wiz fucking. Are, it's it's Google, Google, man. Anything to win. Yeah. Anything to win. No, Wiz threw in the money, man. He he exactly. threw the money that hit and took it down. Uh, but no, the, the good thing is here, and, and it all comes down to this, in my opinion. You know, the the people, every person I've worked, I, I've I've worked with and met at Twitch, and and one of the most influential. I'm not going to say his name, but one of the most influential conversations I've ever had with a Twitch person was on a bus at the St. Jude meetup that Twitch ran. I'm not going to say his name, but the knowing the the like one group is the dedicated, passionate people that want to bring entertainment to the masses. Exactly. One group is the people that saw something that can make money and want to get in on it. So uh, it's kind that's of like, a little bit discrediting. I, I think those same people well, still exist on YouTube I'm, gaming. Again, again, it's just their bosses I, are the ones that want to see money. My point is here is there, there are extremely passionate people who put a lot more value in things that aren't necessarily related to monetary items. And, and it's very comforting to know that, that on at least the side we're on right now, there's things I, that money can't buy with I think a lot you of you guys are showing and a little bit of Twitch bias in this. Perspective is I am so things. Twitch biased. No, I, I think <laughs> your your purple is showing a little bit on all three of you. Like <laughs> I think that exists on both. Like if you're fucking telling me that the CEO of Twitch didn't have Amazon buy them for money, like that Dude, dude, just just <laughs> saying sometimes when when a larger company acquires you, that's a lot more than financial. That can open up lines, that can open up supply. It's a lot more for sure. That, that can it's... open up connections you didn't have before. Oh, Amazon people are now connected to streamers. That that that's a lot deeper than just money. I mean, don't get me wrong, money's involved. I course. still think money's the num like money's dude, up here. If they just wanted money, here. we would have been sold to Google. 
If they just wanted um, money, then the first off, or dude, we would have been. We don't know that. Years ago, I don't. I think mean, we Twitch, know is, that. Twitch has had crazy offers over the time from people. I'm sure, not that I know, but I'm sure they've been offered large amounts amounts before this, and and you know, reasons or other things have turned it down. Again, conjecture. I'm not. I don't. Want yeah, to I mean, we we don't know but, for sure. You know, I mean, it's the kind of thing where I I think if you notice, Amazon bought Twitch, and what changed? Yeah. No. I'm not. Well, almost nothing. I think that was a big part of that purchase. And I think that if it was different, that we wouldn't have been bought. You know, and that alone, I think, says something. That. What was that what? thing? Remember when we were all shitting our pants over that? I know I was. I was like, Amazon's buying fucking Twitch. Oh, in terms of it's things changing? Gonna different. Everything's going to be nah. bad. It's going to suck. <laughs> all gonna, it's going to just be awful. This is corporate yeah. over. No, no. Uh, Another thing, though, I want to make sure people <laughs> understand. Google was making, a, I mean, not Google. Twitch was making a lot of money before Amazon bought them. Like, it's, it, this wasn't an issue of, oh, we don't have a lot of money. Oh, Amazon wants to buy us, and they're giving us a lot of money. Like, it's, there's other things at play. That, my point is not that money wasn't a large factor. Of course it was. Sure. But I'm just saying that there were other factors at play that weren't money. Yeah. And that's, I, and that's very meaningful. I think one of the biggest things is someone who's been on both, and, and maybe Ali can talk to this too, because you have quite a, I think your YouTube is even larger than mine, so you may even have a better opinion on this. But uh, everyone's been talking to community, and it's, it's, more true than people think like i don't know a single person that works at youtube proper i have never met a single fucking person that works in the youtube office that has contacted me to help me with my youtube granted i'm much smaller i'm i'm in correlation to twitch like i'm probably like someone that has like forty thousand followers right on youtube in size comparison so maybe there's no reason for them to reach out to me uh but on the flip side like twitch has always been there no matter what when it comes to like staff reaching out right so yeah. i think that is a major thing i also think youtube gaming is such a uh like there's youtube and then over on the far right side is youtube gaming i really feel like they're going for a completely twitch approach with someone yeah. like fwiz at, at the helm of that where they are going to be as personal as as, as possible um but the, the the people you deal with on youtube are the mcns they're the people that are like another stepping stone to YouTube. And that doesn't exist on Twitch and it probably never will. Uh, and so there, it, it, I really wonder how that's gonna factor in, like who is going to be managing people for YouTube gaming on the streaming side of things? Will it be these MCNs that are the middlemen to, con to communicate with YouTube gaming or are they going to be out and doing everything on a more personal level with the actual YouTube streamers? Like, I don't know where all that comes. And, and maybe that's my biggest question on, on it all. Is like what is the route they take on that, and I haven't seen anyone talk about that yet um, from YouTube gaming switch, side. Switch merchandise companies because of that, because I wasn't talking to a person there, and I'm talking to a person at my new one. I have a person that I can talk to. Yeah, yeah, it's very, it's one of the biggest things, and that that's for me like why I just, for my my purposes, I don't really care too much about my YouTube. Yeah. And it's because it's just a VOD hosting comp, like it's a VOD hosting service for me. That is the entire purpose of my YouTube. Yep. And a lot of that's just because there's no community there. The commenting on YouTube is fucking awful. It is like the scum bucket of the fucking internet. It is terrible. It is the worst yes. in the fucking internet. <laughs> and it's a pain in the ass to moderate. It's not easy. It's, it's not, not moderate. You can't moderate it. Oh, yeah. I try to moderate my comments, but it's just out of hand sometimes. Yeah, and, and those are probably like stopped. far worse I, than yeah. what we get. So, yeah, it's... I don't know. Like they, they have a lot to do on the front end and also the back end of, of YouTube gaming to like make it appealing. Um, and I think the first of that is like you have to make it feel like a community. You can't make it feel like this is YouTube, the fucking big bad of the internet, like one of the biggest fucking things on the internet. If it mm -hmm. feels like that, that's what people are going to have for an experience and that's not what Twitch offers for an experience. It offers a much more personal experience with the the interaction between chat the interaction between everything here's well this is the 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 boiled down thing for me people are people are talking like someone said in chat and i'm sure it's been said a few times but i noticed one of them saying um yeah if if youtube offered you like a buttload of money to come over there and yada 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 you you definitely go over there and this this is what i will say to as far as the difference between twitch and youtube i have met lifelong friends on this site um, and that, that, uh, is more important to me and will always be more important to me than money. If the only way that I would switch from Twitch to YouTube is if 
um, Twitch, uh, I was not able to support myself anymore. Yeah, if it became a monetary, yeah. Yeah, if I could not provide myself with with food and shelter, that would be like I would if even if it was just paying me minimum wage, I was just scraping by. I would still stay stay with Twitch because the 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 connections that you make are so much deeper. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <clears throat> Couldn't agree more. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, no, I I mean I, again I, wish... I, I want to make sure people understand because I'm I've been reading chat during this. We we are not bashing YouTube. No, and I'm all. sure there's streamers I'm sure there are streamers from Twitch that are gonna go stream on YouTube. That's great. Again, that just increases the competition. That makes the whole world go round. You know, I mean there's a chance that YouTube may look you know, I'm maybe someone from YouTube's listening right now and they're sitting here taking notes and they're going, okay, we need to improve this, we need to help with this. Clearly this is our image right now. And maybe they're gonna do things to help with that and then Twitch will see make better. And again, just up, up and up all around. But I want to make sure people understand we're you know we we are streamers and of course, our financials are important to us, but at the same time, you know, we also can have loyalties outside of money. And at the same time, though, you know, we, we do do this as a job. So it's, it's a very interesting dichotomy for us. You know, we don't, we don't necessarily represent anyone. And of course, we will go where the pastures are greenest in most yeah, cases. You have um, but again, again, it's Twitch's responsibility to keep our pastures greenest. And it's YouTube's responsibility to show them what a green pasture can be. And that will be something that, you know, we go up and down. And that's why I think a lot of us are so excited for the future is because no one knows where that's going. Now, yeah. do we are we absolutely sure or not absolutely sure, but have we heard anything about conflict of interest stuff as far as like streaming on? Because, well, like, if, if the, uh, already like, exists, it already though? exists in the contract. Yeah. You can't stream anywhere else if you sign a contract to be a partnered streamer on Twitch. You can't stream anywhere else. It's in the contract. Oh, I haven't read it in a long time, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like I, people it's very lenient. Like Twitch okay. doesn't enforce that. I've never seen them enforce that. I, I Total Biscuit streams on MLG for his one of his um right. esports things. But so, he's Total Biscuit though. <laughs> yeah, no, it, and that's that's true. Like I'm sure you get to a certain size on Twitch and you can do a lot of things that other people can't. Like we talked about that last week. Um, yeah. But I would, I would be very, I am very sure that if it came down to it and someone was fucking dual streaming to YouTube and Twitch at the same time, both people would be like, what the fuck are you doing? Like <laughs> choose a fucking side. Don't do that. Yeah. Like that's very real. And, and you'll never see that. Uh, 100%. I don't I'm, even think you can do that yeah, now. But I'm asking, actually, why not? Like, why wouldn't they allow you to stream on, on both? Because that would, like, have a lot of, like... Because it's a con... I mean, that's what you agreed to in the contract. That's the only answer that I have for that. No, no, I'm saying, like, if they if they took that out of the contract, would that not be beneficial? Why? Or, excuse me, what would be the bad part about that? If you're streaming, like, if I turn on my camera and I, I was going to Twitch and YouTube at the same time... From From whose perspective, what would be the bad part about that? From the, the the company, the Twitch or YouTube, what would be the bad part for them? Because you're not like you're Giving not on their site. That you could, yeah, you can still go onto Twitch and watch that stream. You can't come to YouTube and watch that stream. No, I'm saying if I know I know you're streaming. To, if you're streaming to both, like that's still the, the, the I I still stand by what I said. Like you can't. That is still accessible on Twitch. It is not solely on YouTube. Like that is the get for. A, a contract is that you want it only on your site so that fans of say PewDiePie can only watch PewDiePie on YouTube. That's the only place you can watch him stream, right? That's, that's the big get for YouTube gaming or Twitch. And, and right. And I understand that, but like, that's what I'm saying as far as like, they'll get some of ours. We'll get some of theirs is I, like, I honestly don't think you'll see that much change to be like, I it, it's, it's, Probably awkward that the only person coming to mind right now that I could really see changing would be Gold Glove. But I think he's, I think Goldie's so intertwined he's, with Twitch now yeah. that, like, I think if he had to choose, and I'm just thinking this, he would probably just go with Twitch. And I, I think a lot of YouTubers would. He's been here since it was Justin TV. And yeah. I, I've discussed this with him before. And he is very loyal to Twitch and not just because they, you know, they've been taking care of him, but like we've mentioned before, the community of Twitch and how it just means, even though being financially stable is important, the factor of having those friends and this like Twitch family is very important to him. Yeah. 
and who knows like it that's a personal decision decision that the the total biscuits or the gassy mexicans or the gold gloves or <laughs> the, the syndicates though that's that's their own decision that mm -hmm. i can't even begin to fathom what that is uh and i'm sure that they've already got stuff thrown at them from youtube gaming like uh, who knows what is actually going on behind the scenes right now to lay the foundation because if you're youtube gaming you want to launch with the biggest best people on your site you don't want to launch with someone with 40 viewers on your site, right? Like they, they want the big names there. So yes. I think we'll just have to see what happens when it launches fully and see who's on there. It'll be you know? interesting. I'm just to wondering honest, if it's like every channel will be toxic like the comments. It'll probably be that's, terrible. That's yeah. something that I've thought about too. Like one of the best things about Twitch for me is my chat and like the way it's ran and how I'm able to interact with it. And I was thinking, what is YouTube going to be like? Because I know in my YouTube comments, it's just terrible. Like, they say some really messed up stuff. Yeah, man. And, you know, it's just... It says a lot when PewDiePie and Total Biscuit turn off comments on their entire YouTube channel. Like, you yeah. cannot comment on a video on their fucking channels. Like, that's exactly. a big statement. So I don't like, know and, how and the thing is, like, this you is... don't even have to read comments as a YouTuber and to actually turn them off. Yeah. Is is insane. what are the point? What is the point of YouTube comments? I don't really know. I, I honestly don't well, know. Well, it's supposed anymore. to be positive or criti criticism, like positive criticism or something. I guess but that's it's what not. it's devolved into. Yeah. I, I honestly, yeah. it was. I'm trying to think back, like when YouTube launched, what the comment system was for, and it, it was always just for shitting on the broadcaster <laughs> or for the YouTuber. Well, okay, that's, okay. Now, that's all I've expected. YouTube's credit here. Now, I, I had a conversation a few days ago about disassociation in comments. One of the reasons, for instance, an 11 year old kid thinks it's okay to tell someone they're going to rape their mother over voice is because they know they're never going to get punished for it. Yeah. It's a disassociation. They would never walk up to a, an adult and say that to their face. Yeah, I get feel punched that in the mouth. You take exactly. away reason exactly. and, and they should. In fact, I wish that every computer had a fist next to it. <laughs> Dumb, it would just punch them in the kid face. Standard on um, yeah. Clearly their parents aren't and their Why family. Why did I buy the anyway. fist cam? <laughs> and I know, right? Such a but bad anyway, um, the, the point is, though, I, I, I'm going to give YouTube a little bit of slack here. I think there's, there's different levels of association when you're posting something that you may, you know, that it's totally up to you if you're going to see something back. You can just never visit the page again, whatever, mm -hmm. and actually chatting in a chat room. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know if it's quite fair enough to say, oh, well, all the YouTube stuff is toxic, so their chats are going to be horrible and toxic. But don't get me wrong, they probably will be. But I'm just saying that it's not necessarily, you know, posting and chatting are different things. And I think that there's a good chance that their chat may not be quite, I know I'm going to kick myself later for saying this, may not be quite as bad as their comments. I'm hoping that's the case. That, that's the hope. Um, but, you know, I mean, there's bad places. On, you can go to the, the dark ends of Twitch and get oh, the I've same. Oh, I've seen some. Yeah, no, you can go to Soda chat. Poppins chat and fucking see what it's like to live in a fucking insane world. I will say this also. <laughs> I will say this also. I feel that if you're trying to make a community or chat something, it's a lot easier to do that moderating a an active live chat room than it is comment comments system, that have been yeah. posted hours and days earlier. Like it's it's very easy when you have a let's just go with when you have a hundred people in a room and someone acts out of line and every one of those hundred people sees a mod, ban them and go, no, that's not what we do here. That's ninety nine yeah. people that immediately know, oh, maybe I don't want to do that here. And in comments, that's that's just it's just not the same. It's just not there. You know, yeah. that, that level again, that level of association just isn't as quite as much. Do you think Twitch has lost out by not having comments on VODs? No. No. I don't think they've lost I think that I don't, they, they, Go ahead. Well, I, I, I'm very short. Sure. I, I don't think that many people use the VOD system on Twitch for a viewer's perspective. Like, you can go and look right now at the top highlights. It's like maybe 20,000 views on like the number one highlight for this week. But maybe if they had like commenting on it, that maybe would if it was properly something. done, it might change. Yeah. I don't, and I, I, I think that's one of the things that Twitch has to do moving forward is like. That would be very interesting to see. The VOD system yeah. needs an overhaul 100%. There's no question about that. Completely. Like, right now, the VOD system is a poor man's YouTube. It's fucking it's dog shit. shit. It's, a, it's a poor man's YouTube. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. like a little. A lot yeah, maybe we'll compete with YouTube, well. whatever. It's, it's There's no monetization on it. See? It's nothing. You can't. Yeah. No, it's, it's the only monetization if, on it is like locking your VODs subs only, like I do. That's the only way to monetize your VODs. In fact, I'm that? doing that soon. Yeah. explicitly so people will go to the YouTube to watch them because there's more stuff I can do. That's why I do so, that. 
<laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. If if Twitch were to offer that kind of thing, I don't know if I would do that. That's like that's again one of those interesting things that may come with competition because YouTube gaming right now, they essentially have the best VOD system ever with their live streaming. Yeah. So it's kind of like. That's well, a that's, pretty big incentive for Twitch. That was one up. of the perks, wasn't it? Was like as you're live streaming, it automatically saves a VOD to your channel on YouTube. I I think that's actually in place right now. If you try to live stream on YouTube, it saves the VOD. But let's let's bring up a next interesting question though. Does this mean that that Twitch should try to up its VOD game to compete with YouTube? I think it's a factor. I don't think it's the biggest thing. I, I honestly think Twitch's biggest problem right now is honestly stability. Like the past three months, fucking it could be. Tuesday afternoon, no fucking reason, and, you know, yesterday, we lost the ability to put chat commands in. We couldn't unhost, we couldn't yeah. ban people, we couldn't, like, just little shit like that will really start to make people question, like, hey, maybe, maybe YouTube gaming's not that bad, let's go, let's go check it out, let's see what's going on over there, because at least I can go live and unhost, I can't unhost someone on my stream. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think who that was, yes, there was a... Oh, it was Vern. He he couldn't uh, host uh, someone yesterday on a stream. He couldn't go live uh, yep. for like an hour or something. So there there's a lot of uh, I I don't know. Like I guess that's a good question. What what is the one thing that Twitch works on first for you guys? Uh, is it the VOD system? Is that the unanimous one, or is there something else? No, no, no. For me, it it would definitely need to be the subscription system. Yep. Allow us to choose more how we're going to monetize our professional life. And two, and I think someone in our in my chat foe just nailed it, and I'll actually read it here. I think the biggest thing that stands out for Google YouTube is their web player. Let's pause that stream. Let's rewind that part that I missed, and it has True. hardware acceleration. Yeah. I think I think that kind of tech is the stuff that Twitch really needs to be concerned about now. Because if if there ever was a situation where there was identical content on both, that's a really big deal. Yeah. Uh, that's true. That's true. Zeke, what about you? What's what's the one thing, or or what are a couple things for you that would be like the uh, big improvement? Uh, Twitch should give us more money. <laughs> 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 I, you know, Very in depth. To, to extract from that, if CPMs go up on Twitch and they stay where they're at, or or like it's going to be a race of CPMs for a lot of people. To be honest, that's why. Hey Zeke. Hey Zeke, how much did you rate for Saint Jude? <laughs> In, in in one in one week, how much 50, did you raise for Saint? Fifty three thousand dollars. Fifty three thousand dollars. Okay. <laughs> okay. In in, um, in what, seven what, in seven days. Seven days. That's seven days. That, that's the community that we have. That's that's, that's like true. yeah. That's the, the best the best example I can give. I don't even th I forget about that. Like that's probably one of the best examples I can give to like why I'm a like Twitch. Yeah, so what? someone a hashtag bleed purple. The, the thing is, the the important thing that a lot of people aren't getting is that someone of your size can raise that. Markiplier does charity streams and raises oodles of money, but he is bigger than all four of us times seven combined, right? So like, of course he's gonna raise that much. But the fact that his his low favorited tweets are like two thousand. Yeah, the <laughs> fact that like Zeke can do that on a service like Twitch would never occur on YouTube. That's just. That would never happen, and I think that's a very important factor as well. Um, but yeah, going back to I think CPMs, like one of the reasons that MLG, the people that are with MLG, the biggest thing that they have is that their CPMs are astronomical compared to a Twitch or to a YouTube. Um, I'm, I don't think I could say what they are, but they are very, 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 very high. And so if YouTube came in, comes out of the gate and promises, you know, an X CPM that never goes below that, that's a pretty big perk for a lot of people, right? Uh, and maybe Twitch has to match that. Like Twitch has, I think CPMs tied to contracts for a lot of people and it's it's not that high. So maybe that goes up as well in the future. Who knows? I don't know. We'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. Well, that um, goes with the whole, like if they do the subscription idea um, with the multiple subscriptions, I don't know how you guys were explaining it, but that could tie into like higher CPMs if like they do a multiple subscription type of thing. Yeah, to um, like subscribe to a team, to... you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Absolutely, and in terms of I'm, what I'm talking about, I'm just talking about literally Twitch looking at Patreon and going, okay, that's what we want to let our streamers do. 
identify different yeah. subscription levels, different amounts per. Yeah. They can take the exact same amount for every subscription, whatever. They don't care because they're still making their same amount of money, and it's only the streamers at that point that are benefiting. I mean, that would be, you know, they're oh, man. I could. I'd be very surprised if that's not already in the works for one or the other, or if both I would are hope so. But you know, I've been I've been told that for years now. So it's like well, it's you know, a hard obviously thing to nail down. Yeah, we've been told that for years, and now we have this private messaging system, and now we have these other systems, and it all comes down to priorities, like we were talking about before. You know, if I if I would have had this system two years ago, that would have been a huge. Every day that goes by without a system like that is potentially, you know, a loss. To be blunt. Yeah. So, you know, this is like priorities, y'all. Help us. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> Did you guys see yesterday, uh, Hassan tweeted out that the emoticon limits are going up on Twitch. They tied it to a sub count. Uh, <clears throat> 30 emoticons will be the cap for 3,000 plus active subs. 35 for 4,000, 40 for 5, 45 for 6, and 50 for 7,000. And I guess everything below that is tied to... I guess they already have ranks for everything 25 and lower. I don't know what those they, are they off did. the top of my head. And but it I, capped out at, at 25, I'm pretty sure. Just to be clear, though, it's 7,000 is the last... 7,000 for 50 emotes, yeah. Woo! Uh, and, hey. you know... It, Someone at 7,000 who, who all of his emotes just make a mural. You know what's interesting? The like most you, interesting part of this to me is not <laughs> that people are getting more emotes. It's that the idea of hiding your sub count will not be possible anymore. Because if you have a oh. certain number of emotes, people know exactly how many subs you have. That's yeah. not entirely true. It, it means that they'll know your highs. Well, yeah, they will know your highs, so yes. Your highs. But for instance, I had 5,000 subs uh, What at the end of H1Z1 right. months and months ago. I'm just over four now. See, and I don't – What so. the question I have for that is, is it your peak? Is it your current? Like where do they – like are you eligible now for the 40 no, emotes? I, I'll tell you right now, if, if the way that it is currently, if you if you have the 250 sub thing and you you get 251 subs, you put in for an emote and then before they, Twitch actually gets to it, you drop under, they will reply to you saying, you can't sorry, you need to have X amount. Okay. Yeah, that's I, happened. That's and you, and you, will, you will not be able to replace or use those extra emotes. Well, you can use them if they're already established, but if you want to edit or change them, nope. And I mean, that's they, how it should be. They take emotes away if you lose subs. Do they really? Yeah, I don't. Uh, uh, Tor- you remove emotes? Yeah, I think Tornus was talking about that. Really? Really? I, I you know what? That's the that's the impression I got from the message. How uh, how how big is his channel? I don't know. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Tornus is Tornus is pretty Tornus is pretty big. He's how, a daily. How do you that could, that? I mean, they, we don't remove emotes from Tinos. There you go. Okay, cool. Okay. There was, you go. Oh, 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 yeah. There we go. Right there. Okay. Thank you, Tinos. Yeah. So they don't remove emotes. I know you can't add them like app, if you don't meet the requirements at that exact minute where they're doing it. Which okay. again makes perfect that sense. That makes sense. But yeah, yeah, that makes sense. He was mistaken. Tino. Okay. Fine. That's cool. Cool. The the other thing too is uh, he just assumed, I guess. That it's interesting to me because once you get into like the the five k plus range, that number is changing almost on like an hour by hour basis, uh, just oh, yeah. because of like people not resubbing or for whatever reason. Like it's so I, I'm interested to uh, see just, like just for reference, I've lost three hundred and ninety five subs in a day. Yeah, oh just because God. everyone subbed on X day you, and they you have a resub, big yeah. ass sub train a, a month before then, and you're playing a completely different game a month later, and <laughs> those people. Yeah. For me, it happened in Final Fantasy. I had a huge sub train in Final Fantasy. It was great. And then about a week later, I kind of said, you know what? I've done everything I want to. I'm going to switch games. And that for that three-week period, people kept coming in. Hey, where's Final Fantasy? Where's Final Fantasy? And it's just like, yeah. it's right on down. But that's the way of Twitch. That, and that's that's and Twitch. It's yeah. kind of funny because people are like, oh, you lost all those subs. It's horrible. And I'm like, not really. If you, if you look at what happened, if you think about how it works, it's exactly how it should work. That's why it I have should, less yeah. subs now than I did it. When I got 15k streams during H1Z1, I'm not streaming really big hype games right now. It's fine. That's that's how it works. Yeah, that's <laughs> it'd be weirder if I still. still had those subs. To be honest, yeah. I just want to just want to give this out. Um, I miss. I totally misspoke. I shouldn't have said that they do blank. I should have said I read that they do blank from blank from this. Oh, you're, you're fine. That was that was totally my bad. I apologize. <laughs> you know, enough. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I wouldn't worry about no, it too I, much. Dude, fuck it. I forgive um, you. Hey, I, I made my I'm fucking mistake, and I'm sorry. Co, you're, 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 like you're, you're off the show. You're off the show, Zeke. You're off the show, bro. Uh, Co, you were talking about you know Twitch having to grow. 
Uh, I think Ali's. No, Ali's picture is good. This is the current <laughs> job list right now that are open jobs at Twitch. It is gigantic. Uh, yeah. There are all these jobs currently available at Twitch right now. So if you're looking reading for a that job. on your Skype screen right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, business dev, bunch of stuff. Engineering, obviously gigantic. Damn. Right uh, here. We, we are looking at the initiative of competing with YouTube right now, right yeah. there in tech. And the, the, funny, or yeah. not the funny thing, the interesting thing is not all these jobs are in San Fran. There's some in London. There's some in Taiwan. There's some in Brazil. There's some in Japan. A lot of those are partnership leads for those respective countries. I wonder if countries. that's esports stuff in Taiwan. Huh. Uh... Well, a lot of them are just partner partnership associate is, is what's going on in, in Taiwan. And there's also a development associate and community associate. So maybe they're going to open up a, uh, a Taiwanese office. They might already have one. I don't, I don't actually know these things. But uh, there's a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of stuff available. Oh, on shit. I also lied about not wearing pants. I'm wearing, I'm wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you stood up? What about Did you? It? Is it a lie? You I'm fucked a up. About me is wrong and awful. You fucked up. Uh, so yeah, if you want to jump in on the the Twitch stuff, obviously apply. Just saying, Zeke. At least that last one you could fix. That's true. <laughs> Shots fired. Shots fired. Uh, well, that was a. I th I think that discuss. I'd be interested to have that discussion more as we we learn more. Uh. I think that's a super good discussion to have for people to be talking about Always that stuff. It's a shame, you know, because it took up 50 minutes and we only have 10 minutes left, but go ahead, Co. <laughs> well, I was just going to say it'd be interesting, uh, like a small segment every week on Drop Frames, just to kind of do a quick assessment on, like, what has YouTube Gaming done this week? What has Twitch done this week? Just kind of like a, just yeah. a really brief well, little check in YouTube every Gaming week. Gaming is in July, right? Is that when it is? Uh, let me go to, is it just youtube.com slash gaming? Is that? Dude, I'll be perfectly blunt, dude. I haven't even been to the site yet. Like, I've never yeah. watched it. I so haven't it's, either. I, it's, I still need to even watch. That's why I think it's, it would be good, though, too, because, like, people like me that are, like, Twitch all so, the way aren't going to pay attention to, like, what's going on on what? YouTube. So, if, like, I'm informed. Hold on. What have they? So, YouTube gaming, youtube.com slash gaming, which I guess is the site. I guess anyone that posts gaming videos automatically throws their subs into this because it's got what? 78 million subs, <laughs> which is a little bit high. Maybe See, hashtag... here's another issue that I have is like they came out with this and I had no idea at all about like any of this plan and I upload my gaming content and I wasn't contacted as a content creator for them. That's YouTube, right? Like, yeah, I was like... I mean, I kind of am not, I'm not shocked about it, but I, you know, it's just a thing for me. I, was, I wasn't God contacted damn. about any of this. Some of these views are depressing. Four days ago, and he's already at three million fucking views. Like, that is insanity levels of views on a fucking video. It's Minecraft. I don't even know. Who is the diamond Minecraft? I bet you he has like four trillion subs. Let's check it out. Four uh, trillion. Yeah, he's got People are saying that's wrong, Jay. Okay, it's got 6.7. I don't know how it's wrong because it's youtube.com slash gaming. So we're in the wrong spot, apparently. Is it? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe that is like the gaming thing of all. Let's gaming.youtube.com. Maybe all the oh. games. Well, here you Maybe go, YouTube. Those, like those Twitter troll accounts. Oh, is this like, it? Bill Murray. This is the it's not really Bill Murray. So I oh, guess wait, that's no, just okay. hashtag I, I gaming. Went to the gaming that's gaming.youtube.site too, and it was just that little splash image. But I know people were watching E3. On YouTube that was stream. You, that was YouTube.com slash E3 is where that was. So here you go, YouTube Gaming. We don't know where the fuck everything is, man. You got to make this easier for us to navigate because none of this makes sense. Uh, so yeah. This is a site, not that one. Gaming.youtube.com slash coming soon. This isn't that's, their site. That's what I was on. So wait, is it, it's not even up yet? No, no, their site's not up yet. It, it comes up in July, I think, or, or summer, I guess is what they say. Click the heart. Yeah, that's why I said <laughs> Here's the official blog. Uh, what happens if I click? Oh, the, does that just play music? It told me the job's finished. Does that mean it's done? I don't know. Illuminati. I, I hate this. Fucking, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this pandering of shit right here. They're playing like fanciful music and now it's Frogger. Then there was Frogger like a and Triforce. And, like, He's from Zelda. Go fuck yourself, YouTube game. <laughs> <laughs> that shit infuriates me. Why does it play sounds when I click on shit? shit? dude. Get some original shit. Yeah. I guess that's their, their glitch, right? Is that heart? Their little 
polygonal 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 heart that's what it is there you go yep i think it's polygonal what it's polygonal i think it's polygonal i think it's a zelda ripoff it is <laughs> polygonal sounds so much cooler though uh i don't know that's so this sure. was on this was on twitch's instagram what is that it says oh you can't you can't read it is that the twitch party thing no, it's TwitchCon. Twitch it says, well, yeah, yeah, it's but it says, Ezekiel Third coming to TwitchCon. Hey. <laughs> that has a picture of me. Wait, is that supposed to make <laughs> people want to come or not want to come? I don't know what they're thinking, dude. You know what the funny thing is about, was that also on their, so the, the Twitch Instagram is very new. It only has 52K followers on it. <laughs> so it's, it's like very small compared to everything else they do. So I think you honestly got shafted in terms of the promotion. <laughs> you might want to see if that's also on Twitter. Yeah, it's like, no, 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 don't put that on their Twitter. Don't put it on their Twitter. <laughs> go, go, hey, you know what? Hey, Frank that we hired in off the street. Uh, why don't you go? You can go on the Instagram, right? Why don't you put that on it? Put it whatever. It's like <laughs> Twitch Instagram is like pictures of like balls and shit. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. Just pick whatever they want. What image is, is what? Is this your Viking helmet? Is that what this is? They, yeah, the same image that I used for the, for the Intel thing. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll just show this. This is what it is right here. Yeah. Oh, that's your Intel. Okay, oh, the same yeah. picture for the Intel GD yeah, pick. Yep. Okay, gotcha. I use that one because it, 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 you know, it says everything I want to say about me. Yeah. Unfortunately, I, Ko's, Ko's, that, that <coughs> Cohen from Intel is like completely super misleading because in that picture, he looks like good and he's looking up at the sky like, Oh, is oh, that his on, DJ? That's his DJ pick, right? Is, <laughs> is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, the black and white one. Let me find this real quick. We're on an Intel sponsored dude, stream. And you look good up. in that. That's a fucking good picture, dude. You look good. Just like JP's uh, uh, MLG picture. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. Here it is. Good in that picture. Okay. I, I'm, I'm going to stand by this. JP's picture still looks like he's he's Superman that just changed back into his street co clothes yep. walking out of the phone booth. Oh, you mean, <laughs> do you mean this picture? It's kind of looking off in the distance as well, isn't he? Yeah, dude. It's, it's like, <laughs> really, man. Do you mean uh, do you mean this picture right here, Co? Hold on. <laughs> He's like, I got I got this one on standby. This one right here, the esports hero, JP. <laughs> <laughs> Looking spelt, no beard. This it. is the fan art. I like how I have a flag of France on my back for some. Reason. I know. I was just about to. Say. <laughs> is that France? I don't know. I'm an ignorant American. I don't know what that is. It looks it's like, like France. Yeah, it's good enough. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm trying to find a picture, a bigger picture of you. <laughs> Put put that picture back. Put the picture of me back up. I want to show you something. Okay. I'm pretty sure my picture has been scrubbed from the internet. So good luck. No, no, I, I just found it on Intel GG, but it's very small. Look how they look how they they uh, they spell my name. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Isn't that fucking nice? He's Ikeel. Hey, Ikeel. Oh no. Hey, uh, <laughs> Zeke. You know YouTube gaming. It's opening up in uh, this summer. I'm just saying they might be able to spell your name right. Yeah, just give them a call. Zyacle at the third. <laughs> Zyacle! Zyacle! Oh, oh, Love it. Oh, God. Love it. The Twitch staff in the oh, chat God. is probably, you know, they're probably not you, scrambling. They're probably just like, leave it. There was just a collective <laughs> face bomb. Just, uh, just a collective, just, oh. I can't click if I, okay. Uh, I, I went through and disabled clicking on those pictures just for Yeah, that. you actually can't click back, on, don't worry. Don't worry, I'll snip it out and then we'll just make it big. We're going to show this image. Uh, we should also probably do shout out. We didn't talk about really anything, uh, but that was an awesome discussion. I was, I'm glad we had that. Um, but we didn't talk about anything else and we're over time. So, uh, mm. I'm still trying to fill to get this fucking image set up, but Batman in 30 seconds, co go. <laughs> love it. It's getting way too much hate. I'm having a great time with it. I love the Batmobile. It reminds me of Touch Comas from Ghost in the Shell. And I swear to God, if they made a, a, a game just based on that car, I would play the absolute hell of it. Like a world of you like tanks the car. Style. I love the car. What in the those fuck? action sequences are awesome. I've never felt more engaged in like both dodging and shooting. I love it. Not only that. Now here's the thing. I, need, I before I say this, I need to say full disclaimer. Some people can't run the game. Some people can't unlock 60 frames per second. Some people get horrible frame rate. I'm not one of them. I unlock 60 frames per second. It's been running beautifully. I haven't crashed a single time in two full stream sessions. Having a great time with the game. I mean, oh, Jesus, what are you doing? Um, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing my, uh, my Photoshop skills, which are not very good. So I just gave yourself a red eye. I don't yeah, anyway, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be playing Batman more tomorrow. I've played it the last two days, and I'm having a, a great time with it.
it's good. Really uh, <laughs> don't run it or don't get it unless you have more than six gigs of RAM or a 980 or probably 970 or higher. And don't run it in SLI. And it'll probably run pretty well for you. Oh, speaking of that, JP. Yeah, what'd you end uh, up going with? A new PC. <laughs> <laughs> he just said, fuck it. I totally did. I was like, oh, I'm going to get this. But you're going to need this to run that. And you're going to need... I was like... Well, to be fuck. honest, so Zeke was asking me questions about a computer the other night. And I started talking to him. And I was very tired, so I went to sleep. And as I was uh, going to sleep, I was just reading Twitter. And I saw you tweet like, should I get DDR4? And I'm like, I'm going to wake up and he's going to be, he's going to understand that you need a new motherboard to be able to use DDR4 and he's going to have a whole new computer. And so now that you said that, there you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> did you order it already? I did. Uh, I tweeted out the specs. Awesome. Awesome. It's, right. it's not like a, not like a Uber, like, you know, year level powerhouse with a 4K, and a, <laughs> but it's, it's. <laughs> It will run games for the next eight, nine months. Yeah, I'm hoping. Uh, like, at, like at, at good quality and speed and stuff. I will say, if you put your computer together on stream, people will come and tell you how to put it together. Nope, <laughs> I, I built it on 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 a website. Okay, uh, okay, there you go, there you go. Uh, all right, well that's been dropped frames. Let's do some shout outs here. Ali, thank you so much for coming on the show. I hope you had a, a good time here. We enjoyed having Yay. you on the show. Uh, we won't make you go first so you can learn how this is done. We'll we'll let Ko go first and do some shout outs. Sure. Great. Well, as always, huge thank you for everyone for coming. A massive thanks to Zeke and JP. It's been it's been really good getting back. I, I miss drop frames. It's been a lot of fun. Ali, it was a fantastic guest. Thank you so much for being here. Um, always fun to have a guest that really participates in the discussion, and it's just it's just been awesome. I am Co Carnage. You are on my channel. Hope you tell us a follow. I'm playing a lot of Batman right now. As soon as I'm done with Batman, probably in the next few days, uh, we're doing Arc Week on our private server with a roleplay rule set. And then we've got the big Fallout franchise playthrough coming soon. Going to play through all the Fallouts on viewer submitted templates. It's going to be a ton of fun. And uh, yeah, hope to see you guys there every day at 8 a.m. EST. Thanks for stopping by today. Keep talking. I'm, your, your chat is scrolling too um, much. Oh my God, someone put your face on like a. Now, what I want y'all to do is go to <laughs> twitch.tv slash MEJP. Hit un. Oh, am I done? <laughs> You're done. <laughs> You're done. By the way, okay. they already. I think. I've, <laughs> did you see that picture, Zeke? Oh, so good. <laughs> I, I can't show that on Twitch because, uh, yeah. There, oh, there are... that's what Lena's talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. yeah. <laughs> I just heard Lena from the kitchen. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Zeke, do some shout outs, sir. Yo, what up? My name is Ezekiel the third. Uh, Zeke, if you, uh, for short. Uh, everything about me is Ezekiel underscore I. I Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, all of those. Um, I can brought... you spell it? Twitch doesn't. Can you. <laughs> e C E K I E L underscore I I I. You get that Twitch? Huh? Did you, did you the get person the you fucking hired for E3 <laughs> gave a spell his name. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I stream um, most every day except Fridays at 11 a.m. Pacific. Um, I drop frames on Wednesdays. I'm a frequent guest on the Real Role Play, and are we doing that this week, JP? Uh, yeah, Saturday. Saturday. Yes. Saturday. I'm still we'll waiting for uh, one person to confirm, but yeah. And uh, Kellen will be back with Kurthak. Um, yep. That'll be a lot of fun. But that's my time. Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. There you go. There you go. All right, Allie, you, you wanna, you're good? You know? I, I think so. Okay. I think you're, I got this. Good luck. Go ahead and do some shout outs. Okay. Hi. I'm <laughs> Allie. <laughs> oh, God, she messed it up. <laughs> I just want to say thank you to Zico and... JP for having me on Drop Frames this episode. Shit. I had a bunch of fun. You guys are really weird. Made me uncomfortable at times, but it was all right. Was That's fine. what we do. <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Twitter, um, 2MG over C squared, like down below where my face is at or over here. That, and right. Instagram is different. Um, my YouTube channel, 2MG over C squared, and of course my Twitch channel. And shout out to the peep crew. Brennan and Fish Tacos. Fish Tacos? Yeah. Where's the best fish deal. taco place? My kitchen. Oh, damn. I was going to thank you, or I was going to say argue thank with that. you for reminding me to thank you, but after that fucking speech, I'm not going to for coming on the show. I was going to thank you for coming on the show, but I'm not going to. No, that's all good. <laughs> no, thank I'll you. I'll see you at TwitchCon. I don't thank know. You. It's okay. <laughs> it, hashtag fight me at TwitchCon? 
And I'm pretty sure it's why. <laughs> Is that gonna be a thing now? <laughs> Pretty sure, pretty sure, pretty sure. Fight me at TwitchCon. You know what? I gotta right fight. Now. I've never fought a, a, a boyfriend girlfriend combo, but I, with you guys, I'm willing. You already took Goldie down, so now you just gotta worry about Allie, right? I picked him up and spanked him. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I saw. I was front row. <laughs> That's, true. That's true. By the way, I forgot to add in there because I haven't actually announced this yet at all. I am actually playing with Zeke and them on the role play this weekend at 3 p.m. Yeah. on Saturday. So hope to see you guys. There. I know a lot of people have been asking about the role play stuff this weekend. 3 p.m. Saturday EST. I need I, to confirm uh, yeah. our final member for that, who is not online right now. So we'll all be there, though. So look forward to that. Uh, we'll be back next week with more drop frames. I think next week we'll have... It's either next week or maybe the week after. We're going to have a five-person show soon. Uh, and I haven't confirmed with one of those people, so I don't want to announce it just yet. Uh, but it'll be a fun show. So look forward to that next uh, Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern. Same time, same place. Thanks everyone for watching Drop Frames. We're out. Have a great evening. We'll see you later.